Can you guys, can you, can you guys hear me? Is this working? Is this good? Audio's good? Real good. All right. So welcome to Mastering Native Script Layouts. I am Brad Martin. I've met most of you here today. Uh, if you haven't met me yet, please grab me after the talk. I'd love to meet more of you. Um, I am a partner at InStudio. We're one of the sponsors here of the Developer Days Conference. Also a Native Script developer expert and an instructor at Egghead IO. So let's jump right in and let's get a little hyped about the layouts, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> layouts in Native Script, uh, they're really fun to do. Uh, I know they're frustrating and challenging at times. When I first started with Native Script, uh, it was back in the 1X days, and if you actually had a, an error in your layout, you would crash the application. There was no warning, there was no logging that you could just fix and then continue developing. It was, uh, it was a pretty frustrating experience and things have gotten vastly better uh, since then uh, with the live syncing and the development cycle. So I know they're frustrating and challenging, but hopefully by the end of this talk, we'll have a few key points that you can take away that will help you with your layouts. And so the basics, what I want to do is kind of go into the core six layouts, the stack, the wrap, the dock, absolute, Flexbox, and then the grid, just briefly, and then we'll dive into some performance with some profiling, and then we'll do a quick tip or two. And so at the stack layout, the simplest way to think of a stack layout is that items go, they're stacked vertically or horizontally, and the way you go horizontal is the orientation property on the stack, you can set it to horizontal instead of the default, which is vertical. And in the GIF there, we're just toggling the orientation. The wrap layout, the way I like to think of it, is that items are going to lay out consecutively in a row, and once they each the, reach the edge of the container, they're going to wrap into the next row. And you see that there, the wrap layout provides the item width and the item height properties so that you can actually specify how wide and how high you want the specific view child, the view components to be within the wrap layout. Next, the, the dock layout is pretty, pretty handy if you ever need to position something on a specific side within the container. Right here you'll see that these four view labels that we have inside of the dock, there's the top, left, right, and bottom, and on the screenshot to the side you see their position. Next, the absolute layout is perfect if you need to position something within the coordinate system on the screen by the top and left positions. And so right here we have this first label at the top and left, 10 and 90, and with the screenshot you see those four labels in their different positions. So Flexbox layout. The Flexbox layout is, it's, I mean there are a ton of properties with Flexbox. If you've ever used Flexbox on the web, you know all of the different options and properties that you can use for positioning your view components. And the Flexbox layout in NativeScript is very similar to the web spec. Uh, I believe it was designed uh, to make it very easy to tra transition to native script Flexbox from the web. And this example is straight from the documentation. So there's a bunch of labels in here and we're setting the flex wrap to wrap. And so basically you can turn off the entire wrapping of the Flexbox if you tell that to be no wrap. Um, there's also the aligned content. And here we're setting it to flex start, which basically is going to align everything once it wraps at the start of the next row in the flex box. And there's also another property that you can use on your child views, and this is the flex wrap before. So basically what this, it, when it's set to true, you're telling it that to break right before that view in the layout system. And that's just a, a very quick entry to the flex box layout. The, the properties and the entire API would take an entire session in itself, so that's just a quick intro to what you can do with Flexbox. And last is my favorite, the grid layout. It is the layout that I use in almost every application because of the, the power that you have with the grid layout and specifically positioning your view components in the layout. And right here, just real quick, the important parts of the grid layout are, of course, the rows and the columns. Uh, whenever you think of the grid layout, think of a table um, from HTML, more or less. And once you use the grid layout, you have to specify the row and the columns for the views to position themselves in the container. And so that's a quick intro. 
uh, into the core layouts. But now the greatest question of all is which layout do you actually use in your application? You could actually use any layout and produce any type of design that you wanted to. It's not going to be the most performant if you were to take that approach, but there's nothing stopping you. And so I like to think of this and the, the way that I decide what layout to use is I sit there and I think, okay, you have the stack, the wrap, absolute dock, flex, and grid. And it's a challenge to come up when you have the design from the designer on your decision. And so it is a key question before you get your layouts going. And so I'll break it down into two questions I ask myself is, how does the content flow? Is it, is it vertical? Is it horizontal? Are there a lot of pieces moving around? And then does any of the content span across varying heights and widths? Uh, which is a perfect case for the grid, and that's why I typically end up using the grid layout myself. So let's look at a real-world app layout here. And on the left, you'll see the Twitter Android application that's taken from my phone. And then on the right is a layout in NativeScript that I did just to kind of mirror the layout itself. Um, and so the first approach here that I took was to create this list view. And in the template, we have a stack layout as the main parent. And then we've also added three more stack layouts to create that uh, Twitter look. And so while you have these three stack layouts, um, and that gets back to the point where you could use uh, any layout and continue to use that layout, but you're probably not going to have the most performant uh, rendering time that you could get. And so with this, when we profile it in the Android device monitor tools, you actually are taking 151 milliseconds to draw the list view itself. Now that is the entire list view. And so 151 milliseconds, you're probably thinking that's not a lot of time, but your complexity in your view layout, it may not be as simple as what the Twitter feed layout is. So you could expand that, it could go up to 300 milliseconds, which you can get up there. I've seen some layouts that take up to almost a full second to draw just a list view. And again, we're not factoring the action bar, the tab view itself. Um, and so it, it can go up quite, quite high. And so I like to think of layouts kind of similar to a, a JSON uh, data structure where everyone tells you to you know, flatten your, your, your data. I think it as flattening your layouts and making it as simple as possible and using as little layout containers as you, as few layout containers that you possibly can. And so here, what we've done is instead of the stack layout here, we've taken the grid layout and redone the entire structure of the list view cell with just the grid layout. Now the trade-off here with the, with the grid versus the stack, and, and I believe a lot of people fall, fall to this, is that you have to write a little bit more markup. You have to specify the rows, the columns, and then your view, uh, your child views, you have to specify the span if it varies, if it view, if it spans multiple rows or columns, you have to specify those row spans and the column spans. And so I see why a lot of people don't prefer to take this, but the performance trade-off is, it's night and day difference once we profile this. And so, here, again, it's the same layout from the stack layout that we've seen previously uh, as far as the look. But once you get to actually profile it, as you see right here, it's 50% less time to actually draw that layout into your UI. And so the trade-off, uh, again, as I said earlier, if you have a layout that's more complex, maybe it takes 500 milliseconds, you could probably reduce that down to half of that time. Those are the consistent times that I see whenever I'm profiling a layout that uh, uses stack layouts way more than it should. Uh, if you could simplify it with a grid or flex box and get the look that you're after, you're going to see tremendous performance gains in the rendering time uh, once those layouts start to draw. And so there's also this other concept. Uh, I know I just said to flatten your layouts. Um, and now you see that we're going to talk about expanding your layouts. And expanding your layouts, I'm not necessarily talking about making the tree larger or having more nodes uh, on the screen. 
What I mean is that there is more to the screen than what the user can see. And so this is actually one of the tips that I like to uh, give people. Um, I use it in almost every application that I've developed over the past two years. Every uh, user case, the, someone's going to come up with a design where they need to show some custom modal or dialogue, and this is the perfect uh, tip that I can give people to do that because on iOS, I don't, most of you might know that on the iPhone, the modal screen is, is full, full screen. You can't modify that. That is the native behavior for iOS. And so I always end up getting these designs where the user wants you know, this custom modal to sit on the bottom right or the bottom left and this custom dynamic behavior. And you can't quite do that very simply with, uh, with the iOS modal. So the way to do that is to think of the screen as having more area than what you actually see. See here at the top, right, left. You can go beyond the boundaries of the device screen. That is the whole concept that I try to uh, explain to people when I'm introducing this little tip here. And so here, what we have is we're basically, I've collapsed the cells in the list view, but we're, our page is going to have a grid layout as the parent. And you'll see here this stack layout at the bottom, the ID is hidden layout, so you get that it's hidden but it's positioned on the same row as the list view. So these items are actually stacked on top of each other inside of the grid, but you, you're not gonna want that. And so the key here for this effect and this little tip is to use the translate to position the hidden view off of the screen. So you can translate on the X and Y axis. And so here we've gone on the Y and we've set it to 3000. So this view, this layout, is far off the screen. And then we're also going to set the opacity to zero just in case some user has this massive device and this you don't want this to show like just a little bit at the uh, bottom of the screen. And so it's always good to set the opacity to zero. And the simplicity of this is that it's a simple call into the animation module or the animation API that every view component has in native script. And so here just uh, the hidden layout here is an instance of that stack layout that we were hiding. And we're just calling the animate method. And then we're going to reset the translation back to zero. So basically, that hidden layout is going to animate itself on top to where it originally was in that grid. And the effect here, once we see we tap this button, it just slides up. Uh, one key thing to remember if you ever do this for some kind of custom behavior is you probably are going to want to give the user a way to close that custom modal. Uh, so make sure you have a reset for the animation to translate back off. And so another, another thing is to, to, this is what you can see. Uh, everyone knows you're holding your phone, your tablet. The user and what you can see is limited to the four sides, the, the boundaries of that screen but there's actually more, and so that is the concept here, is that you can take advantage of all the different sides and, and go off the axis a little bit. But another thing in performance to think about is that just because what you see on the screen is, is what you think has been laid out, you may have a layout that is you know, a grid and a, and a, a long list of, of stack layouts for this very dynamic and complex UI, and so those items have already been drawn by the rendering and so it takes time for that to happen and so that's something to keep in mind in terms of performance which is a reason if you have a, a long list of items to use the list view over a repeater or just hard coding your layout into the UI so that's just something to be uh, mindful of is that the layout has already been drawn off the screen and the user is going to scroll that into view and so the, the key takeaway here is that layouts are very important. Um, I can't stress that enough. I've been doing them for two and a half years, roughly, with NativeScript. I've fallen through some, a, lot, a lot of pitfalls um, in the system, and it's progressively gotten far better uh, with every release. They are enjoyable. Once you spend a little bit of time uh, hacking on some layouts, you'll, you'll get comfortable with how things flow. And if you can get the concept that the less you can put into the markup, into your UI, the less time it's going to take to draw, uh, to measure, actually measure layout and then render, draw, those onto the screen. And so the performance will be far better. Um, I know the, the core team, that's something that they really drive home, is the less you can put into the layout, 
the, the better it's going to be. Um, and that, that really wraps up the talk. Uh, the performance is the big thing I want everyone to take away. Um, keep your, your views as flat as you can. That is the takeaway. Flatten your layouts. Um, and the performance will come for sure. So thank you. Uh, if anybody has any questions, we might have a few minutes to, for that. Sure. For the, say that again. The view holder pattern, I'm not, I'm not sure. Now, so yeah, so the, the question about the list view, the, the list view is a recycler, uh, which might be what you're kind of referencing in Android. So the list view will not have the, the negative performance that I was getting to when something is off the screen, um, because those views are getting recycled and the data is getting fed into those views as they're coming onto the screen. Does that? Yeah, the, the list view already has that baked in. It is a recycler on Android. I forget, a UI table view on iOS. I, that may be wrong. I'm not much of an iOS uh, developer, but uh, the recycling is already built in. So the list view, you won't really have some negative performance with what's off the screen. I believe it's just a few cells that Android draws um, outside of the boundaries. So, yes? Um, in those custom models, I use those Mm -mm. Is there any um, performance hit on using visibility for visibility? Not that I've seen. Um, I don't use the visibility when I do that. Uh, again, what I do is translate it and set it off to, with the opacity. I, I've not tried the visibility. Now, every now and then, there has been one case where I did have to uh, disable the user interaction. Uh, for some reason, the animation wasn't flowing into the screen just right. And so the user the hidden part was still kind of overlaid. Uh, even though it was offset with the, the y-axis, it was still kind of hitting just very top of the screen. And so that interaction was still blocking. And so sometimes you'll have to disable the user interaction on those layouts. But I've never messed with the visibility. Interact with it, yes. The, vi the visibility property? Yeah, that I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't take that approach very often. Anything else? Yes? So I know that you said, like, good layout is really good because you're flattening a bunch of, like, messy stack layouts and you're left much more performant. If you were just going to take, like, one good layout and just one stack layout, is one of those more performant in general, or is it just really the nesting? It's, it's the nesting in general. Uh, again, the more layouts you have, the more time it takes to measure, draw, and then lay out onto the screen. So if you can reduce it with a grid, then it's a little bit better performance. But if it's a minimal layout and you have two stack layouts and, that's, and it's getting the job done, profiling it would probably be best to decide that. But if, if a grid makes sense and you can wrap your head to use the grid, then I would say go for the grid. Is that it? All right. Well, thank you, guys.